So this here is our, I'm thinking from what I found online today, this is a mid-1930s Simplicity tractor. It's got a rear plow on it. We're working on getting this engine back together. I know, I should have taken a little video before we got started here, but, well, here we are. Uh, oil in it's new. It looks like I'm going to have to replace the coil, which of course was right there, the magnetron, sorry, I don't want to call it coil, magnetron, so I've got that going, hopefully I'll pick that up Wednesday. So I've got some new parts, going to clean up the carburetor on it, clean up the gas tank, and by all accounts, looks like it's sure on, it's got good compression, so, yeah, I'll let you know more here in a few minutes. So this here's carburetor for that thing. It actually doesn't look too bad, just a little bit dirty. I pulled out this jet here. Even that don't look too terribly bad. But I'm gonna clean it up anyway. Make it all nice and pretty. Well, there's the nice, pretty, uh, cleaned up carburetor. Looks to me like this thing has been gone through before, the way the paint's on here and the paint's on the engine and things, like somebody did something to it. So, anyway, we'll see if I can make it run like they hopefully did at one time. Now, this might be a little bit more fun. Let's take a look inside here. I'm pretty sure it's nasty. Eh, can't really see it, but yeah, it's pretty dirty. Time to clean it. Now it's all pretty and clean inside and out. Let's stick it in the Simplicity Plow. So gas tank and carburetor are back on. I think I'm going to put on the old magnetron because I ain't got a new one. And I hear these things are supposed to be bulletproof. So we'll see. Meantime, I got a brand new spark plug. I think I got to bend the run stop lever just a little bit to make sure it connects. Make sure it's good and clean so I can kill it if it happens to start. But we'll fire it up here in a minute, and we'll see how we're doing. In the meantime, hold on for just a second here, and I'm going to show you a trick that I learned for setting up the magnetron. Of course, this is all over YouTube, so I'm going to have to give credit to someone else. I have no idea who it was, but I've watched two or three videos now. So, here it is for you. Hang on. <laughs> so, yes, for the time being, I realized that I'm not putting everything back together here. So I want to do some testing on this. So yeah, not all of my linkages are back together and stuff. I'm going to kind of do this by finger here. In the meantime, I've got this. See, there's that flywheel. And I've got this on one of the open areas here with no magnets. So I'm just going to kind of set this up here for the moment. I'm going to connect it. Okay. Kind of cleaned up that grounding point there on the magnetron. And as you can see, this coil wire here has kind of been jerry-rigged but oh well what you'll see now is this here is kind of loose we're on one of the non magnetic areas here and I'm going to stick a business card there you go oh. I'm going to stick a business card up under here and then I'm going to move this where the magnetic area is right in the middle of that magnetron. Let's see, this goes up and down. Well, this is going to provide my, my gap. So let's just tighten that up there. Well, I have a cat climbing on my back. Then I'm going to grab this by this, do this, I'm going to spin this, make sure it ain't touching anywhere else. Here's to be nice. Okay. Put this up here. All right, kill it. All right, I got it back on here with a nice new spark plug, and I got this set up to try my pulls. Well, 
We'll try it here in a minute. So you've been watching this video and it turns out I've been stupid because apparently I wasn't quite with it yesterday when I was looking at this. This is a points coil and there's this little wire right back here that's cut. That wire, which goes down to this cut wire, is the condenser wire which isn't connected. So i got to pull off that flywheel, get in there, see what them points look like. Later on I'll convert this to electronic ignition I'll show you that video later so I learned how to do that too but for the time being I'm gonna go in here and see if I can't get this out of here and fix it up all right so down there on them points I got the I got that wire soldered back together for that condenser on up to the coil here and before y'all go saying something yeah I know you ain't supposed to do that this is a temporary fix I'm trying a little redneck engineering here Let's see what happens well, she still ain't got no sparks, so I'm supposed to be getting some parts tomorrow, and we'll see if we can't switch it on over to an electronic ignition. Then I bet she'll run like a champ. Well, we're back at this again today. This is, I guess, technically day three of the, this uh, project, but really it's been a couple weeks. Anyway, um, I worked with, I've been doing a little trial and error. I worked at the small engine shop uh, up in Boise, and I found out... Well, we found out together, because they didn't know, that this particular really old engine you can't, well, you can, uh, you can't just directly switch it over to an electronic ignition, like this newer, this newer model electronic ignition here, electronic uh, coil. And the reason you can't do that is because apparently you have to, according to Briggs and Stratton, you either have to replace the flywheel with a modern flywheel or repolarize the flywheel, the magnets in the flywheel. So yeah, that's not going to happen. So we're going to pull this guy back off here. This coil is one of the optional replacement parts for this, but only if there's no points. This one has points. So what we found from the... Uh, uh, technician at Briggs and Stratton was that you cannot use that at all. It's required to get original parts or to get uh, the original type of yeah so I found the coil the Armatron whatever you want to call it on eBay the reason why is because they don't make this part anymore and apparently they haven't for 30 years something like that it's new old parts. It's still original box. <clears throat> but beautiful. Brand new. So let's get it on. Alright, so I got my new points in there. Temporarily I have this fitted up here. But new points are in there. Got the 23 thousandths. Now let's get it all back together. Well, that's all back together. So now... I'm going to take this, cut it to length, because right now it is about 12 feet too long, or something like that, and then put the end on it. And then hook it up to the spark plug, put the cover on for the pull string, and we'll give it a try. Alright, so let's adjust the gap on the coil. Turn this to where the magnets are even. You get this card in there. I like this trick. This trick's kind of cool. Of course, once we make sure all of this works, we'll hook the governor up. I may have to fabricate something to make the governor work because I don't think I have all the parts but yeah so let's make sure we're not touching we're not looking at it. 
So that's what she looks like. So now the only thing I'm going to do here, I've already pulled it apart here. Got one more to pull apart. I'm going to just grab that jet out of there and make sure everything is nice and clear. Put it back together and fire it up. Hopefully. Stand by. Pulled it out of there. It was nice and clean. So we're going to go governorless for the moment just to see if we can get some spark and see if we can get it to fire up. I'm going to put the cover on the front and give it a pull. Wish me luck. All right. Let's give this a shot. Nice, but I am going to have to oil that uh, rope pull. Mm -hmm. All right, got the governor back on there, and as you saw, she did run. Got this set up here. I don't know if that's the original spring or not, but it seems to do the trick. So, yeah, so I'm going to see if I can get this running. A little adjusting on my, my valve here. That's good. The only reason I don't have the wire hooked up for the throttle is because that is a really old cable and I need to put some spray lube down inside of it. Maybe some of that uh, speedometer cable lube or something. I don't know. In the meantime, I'm going to have to pick up some spray lube, squirt it down the tube, and, and maybe it'll start working. It's kind of bound up right now. Anyway, stand by. So we just did a little adjusting on our carburetor here. Had it running a little bit. Had a little problem with the pull start, but I think we can work around that. So let's give this a shot again. This thing had a throttle cable on it, so it was a real problem. Completely binding up and actually way too long. So what I did is pulled that cable out of there. I cut it way shorter so it's not all twisted and binding. Put it in here, lubed everything up real good. Check this out. Oh, wow. Great. Okay. So since I have no idea if this part's still available or not, and it screams because it's got no lube, I'm going to put as much lube in here as I can. And I know this is a spray lube, but hey, maybe we can stop it from screaming. Well, here's where we're going to find out if all well, that lubing did its job. You with me? Let's try that again.
What I really needed was a plowshare blade, which I don't have, but tore it up enough to where we can come in here with some shovels for easily and clear it out. Big problem is all the roots just under the surface. This is sod, somebody put right over the top of those roots. So now we get to play with that. Well, as you can see from all the uh, hard work in that previous little section of video there, this thing did not work the way that I wanted it to. Well, I was sitting in church last Sunday. I know, bad. The preacher was preaching. Suddenly it came to me. I got the belt assembly on here upside down. So let's fix that and we'll give it a try again. Seems a lot easier to do. Here's how the belt assembly is right now. This little pulley dude here, I believe is supposed to go on the bottom. This spring here is supposed to be down here. This whole setup here is supposed to work totally different than it is currently. So let's get to it. So now that there, I believe, is the way it is supposed to be. Springs on the bottom. Pull down here, so pull that up and lock it in place. That engages that. Doesn't leave a lot of room here, but that's not a high speed spinning thing. So yeah, <clears throat> fire it up and give it a shot. Well, I didn't video it, but that was a fail. This isn't tight enough because this is rubbing on it. So I actually need to adjust this more, but I can't adjust it more because of this. And now it looks to me, and I probably should have done this in the first place, but the uh, <clears throat> the belt has is so old it's stretched out. So I think I'm going to have to find a belt that is shorter, which this is a standard V-belt, so I can get about any V-belt out there. Take it down, measure it. Get a new one, then we'll be good. Yeah, problem is the local auto parts store closed at noon. There you go. That's, that's what comes with being not even in, but near a small town and nothing big. But we'll go find something. That's the way it should look, and it seems to work pretty well. Let's try it out this afternoon and see if we can't get some plowing done. I don't know that this was the most exciting video ever, but thanks for watching, and let's try that again. Well, that was it for the plow video. Uh, you saw through all the pitfalls that we finally got it running. It runs great. And I have a ham for a kid. Uh, the only thing we're going to do to it later is we'll do a, um, next time it need point, needs points, we'll do a point delete kit. So basically turn it into an um, uh, electronic ignition while still using the... Uh, the point coil that we bought anyway it's it's running good fast and actually kind of scary now but that's a good thing so that means it's going to plow through about anything hopefully I'll get a plowshare blade from one of these local uh, agricultural scrap yards that I found here recently anyway y'all have a good one thanks for following our journey and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, here pretty quick you're going to see our patreon page it should have a uh, link here on my video shortly uh, and then you can you can help us keep going here on this farm thanks everybody bye, bye.